Good morning, good afternoon. Um, I will try to describe a little bit what NASDAQ Comex do in these challenging times based on technology to grow our business. So what we see is, uh, I will try a little bit short, not too deep, into the key business driver that we see in the market today <clears throat> that is forcing us to continue to develop our technology both for our own use and to our clients. I then look into two areas of how we leverage technology to expand our business. One is what we do for our core business. So with core I mean when we are operating as an exchange. Today we operate 24 markets uh, in the world. What we do as a clearinghouse, what we do as a CSD, and how we develop that based on technology. But we also see another opportunity that we'll elaborate a little bit around. And that is how we as an exchange are well positioned to support other players in this market space. We think that we are uniquely situated with trust, integrity, and an access to members in different sorts. We have the traders, we have the issuers, and we have a lot of other stakeholders in the market that we think that we can provide uh, solutions to. It also helps us grow our business as an, as an entity. NASDAQ OMX is really on a diversification strategy. Uh, NASDAQ in 2007 was an equity market US only. And the journey from there today and to today is dramatically changed that corporation. So it started with acquisition of OMX and then it's continued. So now NASDAQ OMX is a truly global company operating, as I said, 24 exchanges, having all types of asset classes in our portfolio. And still, when you talk about what we are, we many times refer ourselves as a technology company. Yes, we are a big exchange organization, but we talk more and more that we are a technology company. And that's part of our diversification story. I will then give some examples of how we try to expand our business. Uh, and of course, I'm open to any questions. Of course, the, if you look at the business drivers, a lot of them has already been touched earlier today. Uh, the regulation, the change of regulations, are, are massive and it's happening all over the world. Different maturity uh, level of markets, different structures in market, different competitive situations, but one thing is common, the regulatory changes happens all over the world. That is creating a lot of uh, pressure on the technology. You also see how mandatory trading and clearing is becoming uh, forced to come into transparent and open markets. The capital requirement has been discussed. This gives uh, stress on, on clearing houses and exchanges, but it also gives an opportunity to act in a new role based on technology advancements. We also see that control and risk management is growing of interest, and it's going from not only cross markets, cross asset class, but also to real time. Another very high pressure on technology but also an opportunity for us exchanges to play a role, as Hans Ole addressed earlier today. And we also see different rules and regulations trying to take away risks in the market, like circuit breakers and kill switches in, in the US market particularly. If you continue with other business drivers, the decreasing volumes in the market after the crash in 2008 we have uh, discussed extensively in the NASDAQ OMX management team whether this is going to go away or if it's the new normal. And we took a decision to accept this as a new normal. That doesn't mean, of course, that we don't invest in trying to change the volumes in the market with new products and new services, but we think it will be hard to see the volumes coming back as they were before the crash. We think that it's driving a vertical integration uh, and new business models. That's another trend that we leverage and that we see happening in the market. And it's an ever-increasing battle to keep your relative market share in the markets you're in. We also see continued combinations and consolidations in the industry. This, as uh, we, as we self did, reevaluated the whole business model, going from an equity only to cross all asset classes uh, company. So we see this business model changing and we see exchanges getting more and more interested in more than just one type of asset class. And 
economies of scale are get, growing more and more important. Uh, we see the consolidations, we see the capital requirements, etc. One more trend that we see is the demand for data. There's different data available all over the world. More and more data available. More and more data required to live up to the regulatory obligations. And it's a cost and a very hard to manage the big data that we're all suffering from today. But it's also a business opportunity for us as an exchange. Last but not least, with all these pressures and the competitiveness requires that we are still cost cautious. So there's been a really strong focus on decreasing costs. And this is not only for exchanges and clearing houses, etc. It's also for our clients, the brokers and the buy side members of the market. We think this uh, is not maybe this, I, I don't like the statement it's driven by new technologies. I think new technologies enable cost savings rather than drive the cost savings. It's the competition that drives the need for cost savings, but we think that new technologies are the enabler to achieve it. So with all that said, what are we doing in Nasdaq Mix based on technology? I will stay with technology as I'm heading the market technology division of us. Uh, I'm not going to go into the same subject as Hans Ode did. We see a number of opportunities based on the technology. We call the opening, the header of this pitch is beyond the match. So I will talk about things we do outside of the actual matching, but I need to mention matching still. Uh, of course, it is still the core of what we do. And we are continuously investing in our matching technologies, different matching methodologies, algorithms, but also performance and speed. And just as an example, uh, one of our uh, partners, the Swiss Exchange, implemented technology that is now capable of less than 40 microsecond average latency. And that has improved their liquidity and also causing better prices in the market. So this part of our business is, of course, still extremely important, and we continue to develop it for all our own markets. One area where we think there's a big need is in the index, and I also mentioned data area. You may have seen that we recently announced that we made a, re a reorganization within Nasdaq OMX. Previously, indices and global data was two different units. We combine them and we are focusing hard on that as a new opportunity for our business. We see there's an increasing interest in global full service, low cost index provided to take a position in the market. That's the one we're going after. We think that is um, an increasing demand from buy side and sell side for quantitative tools. And what we have done is to build the calcul index calculator based on our matching technology that is now capable of calculating and distributing more than 24,000 indices on a global basis. We do this uh, down to tick size levels. So this is uh, one area where we are now investing heavily in technology and is going global uh, to capture that opportunity in the index space. On the data side, we think it's important to get all the data consolidated and, and available for market and uh, business decisions. That's an area where we in invest heavily also. We also think that's an area where we will help the market become, as Hans Ode said, transparent. And he mentioned our smart portfolio, where we are going to, uh, where we can today uh, survey cross-market, cross-asset classes as if we get the data available. So that's the challenge, to get the data from the different markets available and, and accessible. So we do this for ourselves, but we also provide these tools to our brokers as a service that re generate revenue for us as an exchange, but also helps our brokers to manage this uh, surveillance task. On the capital efficiency issue, we see that cross assets, cross um, uh, cross margining across asset classes is a way of handling one of the problems on the risk uh, capital and the collateral issue. So we have built enterprise risk management solutions that in one system now can handle different asset classes and even OTC uh, clearing, in, uh, leveraging one 
risk uh, calculation ability and therefore uh, decrease our total need for collateral. This is of course something that would be interesting for everybody in the room, I guess, to lower the risk capital. This is based on uh, some a risk manager model that we acquired down in California a couple of years ago. And a couple of examples where we leverage this is in the newly uh, platform that we're going to launch in London and NLX, and also the Tom Options platform in Amsterdam. That was some of the things we're doing for our own business, what I call the core. But we think we have a very good position to expand our, uh, our business into our clients, uh, issuers, brokers, and help them overcome is, uh, cost issues and efficiency issues in their business. So we constantly look at how can we help our clients as we think we are uniquely positioned where we are in their business. We would like to give a couple of examples of what we do. One new newly launched uh, um, offering in the US market is what we call FinCloud. In the US, all the brokers need to store really massive amounts of data over a long time of period because of regulatory demands. Most of the brokers do it themselves in-house, and even though there's a big decrease of cost of storage, the size of the data and the time it needs to be stored amounts to a lot of money. So what we have done is that we have worked with Amazon and their cloud service for uh, for data storage uh, on demand. We have taken our capabilities and, and secured that it is live up to all the financial demands for security, uh, information security and regulatory demands. And now we offer this storage capability for regulatory data to brokers in the US. <clears throat> our calculations show that a broker can save up to 80% of the storage cost using this service. And I would say storing all that data is not the differentiating factor for their competitiveness. It's a regulatory demand. So we think that we as an exchange are really well suited to offer this to the brokers. We earn some money, they save a lot of money, the regulator are happy. I think it's a real win-win-win opportunity. Next step is to, together with Amazon, roll this out on a global basis. And there we can work with you in the room to enable it to your markets. It's a cost saving that uh, really gain, uh, benefit everybody in the, in the marketplace. One area that we are investing a lot in, and you've probably seen the Thomson Reuters acquisition that has been announced and hopefully will be completed somewhere mid-year this year is corporate solutions. This is issuer technology, it's solutions for issuers to be more efficient in the market. We had, um, before the Thomson announcement, about 3,000 clients using this service. With Thomson Reuters, we will have more than 10,000 clients globally using services from us in this space. We see this as a tool to help clients in three, ma in three main areas. <coughs> Sorry. One being in the corporate governance. Being publicly traded, you need to be very strict on how you, how you govern your corporate. So there's a number of tools for the board to run their operation in, in a structured way, also easy accessible tools wherever you are in the world. Second area is more communication. We provide numerous tools for enterprises to communicate with the market. With, list, with analysts, with uh, stock owners, or in general in the market. Third is business intelligence. We provide a number of tools for our clients in this space. They don't need to be listed on Nasdaq Omex, by the way. We provide a number of tools for them to uh, understand how they are perceived in the marketplace and to understand who's trading their shares and analyze with business intelligence tools that we provide. <coughs> this is good for us in exchange in several ways. One is, of course, the revenue stream it generates and diversifying our business. 
but it's also given us a good opportunity to talk to our issues on a regular basis and create a stronger relationship. For our clients, for the issues themselves, this is a great opportunity for them to lower their cost and improve their quality of their governance, information, and data collection and analysis. So this business is growing, and it's actually the fastest growing part of Nasdaq Umex business during 2012. Today, 83% of all the Nasdaq 100 companies are using tools, and as I mentioned, when the merger are completed, we will have more than 10,000 clients globally on this. This solution is something we provide on a global basis, but we're also happy to work with local exchanges to see how it can benefit your growth and help you address your issue markets. So in short, what we have accomplished and what we are striving for is, as I started with, we are diversifying the business. Actually, the cash equity trading today is not bigger than 10, 12% of our revenue. Technology, after the reorganization where we took the corporate solutions business together with what I'm responsible for, the market technology business, is now representing 25% 25, 25 of the whole turnover of Nasdaq UMX and it's growing rapidly. The way we think we can go forward is to really to address the market trends. We try to look around the corner, not only on our 24 home markets, but the 70 markets we collaborate tightly with on a global basis. We think that we should focus on solving business challenges for our own business, but in an increasing manner for clients, members, and issues businesses. That's where we think the exchange has a unique position. We diversify from the core, doesn't mean we don't focus the core. We will continue to focus it as much as before, but we diversify and get away from some of the volume risk that we see on a day daily basis. And in the end, it's all driven by technology. There is not a single service that we offer in the market that is not technology-based. And we think that's where we excel and where we continue to work hard to use this technology for our own, but also make it available for clients in the market. That's how Nasdaq UMX has diversified and how we intend to grow our business going forward. Thank you.